John, I want to introduce you to a new subject for you. All right, let's hear it, Sean. It's called transition. I know in Maryland and Florida, you didn't have to go through that, but at Desert yeah. Mountain, unfortunately, we have to. That's what I understand. It's been a great learning process uh, coming here and understanding the, you know, the winter season, the overseeded Bermuda base uh, rye. Uh, coming in in the fall and winter season and then obviously now we're in summer season and you have to transition this ryegrass back into Bermuda so it can survive during the summer. Can you tell the members a little bit more about what's going to happen? I mean we're standing right here at Cochise number 10 fairway. Uh, we've got a pretty good look at uh, what the grass looks like today and as we're in the first part of July um, what's going to happen over the next several weeks? Well First of all, I want to tell everybody, I don't like transition and neither do they. Right now you look at Cochise, which is pretty good and it's been in outstanding shape this year. Fabulous. But it's probably 60, 70% ryegrass and 30, 40% Bermuda grass. So what I need to do is to get rid of all the ryegrass. Okay. And the Bermuda grass has to come the whole distance. Um, they tell us, the experts tell us we need 100 days. Okay. But if you do the math right here on Cochise, we don't have 100 days before overseeding. Right. And so we actually held Cochise a little bit longer because we're in conversion with the other golf courses. In the future, we'll be cutting out Cochise probably mid-June, so we do have those 100 days. You want to make sure that it's even, that there's no uh, uneven situations, uneven lies, and so that we have a smooth Bermuda grass, so that we can have a smooth over overseeding. Great. So between now, and July 15th when this golf course closes, what will members expect to see in the next, say, two weeks? Okay, well, the first process we've been doing is lowering the mowing heights. Okay. And then trying to mechanically reduce the ryegrass canopy so we can let the Bermuda grass emerge through. Okay. So some verticutting, you might see some lines out there, uh, lowering the mowing heights. Uh, about July, I'm gonna say about 8th to 10th, we'll start spraying the chemical. Okay. Um, that is that chemical safe for members? Because oh, I, yeah. I get that question a lot. Oh, everything that we spray is safe for members. And Great. So the chemicals start acting, uh, probably take about four or five days. The ryegrass will go off color, and then hopefully they're at that point will be closed. Perfect. Every day I keep this golf course open, it's going to get worse. You're not going to open, open up on a better golf course than Cochise was on Geronimo because it's going the other way. But Geronimo's going to get better every day and Cochise is gonna get worse every day from this point. So here we are now on Geronimo, okay? And you, as you can look around and pan around, we still got some Bermuda to grow in. Okay. Um, we're waiting for the better days. Yep. Like we talked about. Get that dew point up again. Dew point. Yep. But if you look at this hole, there's plenty of Bermuda here. Sure. And we just gotta fill it in. And it will take two to three more weeks to get to our point that we, what we want. So I think one of the things we should set the expectation with the members is that when we open on July 15th, it's not gonna be perfect. And this is one of the worst holes, number nine, because it's so hilly uh -huh. and things like that. But we got some really good holes and we got some not so great holes. Um, but you know what? August 1st, I think everything will be great. We are Sean on number one green uh, of Geronimo. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you did uh, on the greens this summer season uh, to make them better for our members? Well, first of all, bent grass in the summer is a delicate thing here. Mm. And one of the things is so they won't putt as fast because you have to water them a little bit more. Mm -hmm. There's more moisture in the leaf, so they just they, they widen out a little bit. So the speed's gonna be closer to 11 or high 10s, and they're gonna be softer. It's a good plan. You know, so, but one of the things that we decided to do on Geronimo is we interseeded them. We introduced the bent grass, 007 and Mackenzie, that we have on Renegade and we're planting on Chiricahua. So when we aerified the greens when we closed in May, we introduced the new grass and trying to grow that in and uh, intermingle that with the existing turf. We did it for a couple things, help competition mm -hmm. um, with Poana. Sure. And we also did it to competition with Bermuda that was lingering in on the greens, but to also introduce the new bent grasses that will grow better colder winter conditions. So Sean, you mentioned uh, having to keep the, the obviously the turf a little um, a little more moist to keep it cooler and so forth, but that's going to mean more ball marks. So let's take an opportunity to kind of show our members that, that Augusta method, so to speak, of fixing ball marks. And we have a ball mark right here. 
Um, first thing is to come in and really just tap it down with your putter. You know, really get the edges of that ball mark tapped down. Then if you can insert your tee directly in the center of that ball mark, maybe give it a little wiggle. Then go from the outside, work your way inwards this way to be able to fix that ball mark, tap it down with your putter, and that ball mark will be nice and smooth and will heal over nicely. Yeah, if you, our crews have these little devices that we actually plug the hole in them to remove the dead material. So what you're doing is pushing the dead material out of the way. Exactly. Thanks, Sean. It's always a pleasure. I always learn something with this guy. Me I too. I hope you did too. <laughs>